everybody! Welcome to my channel, Humble Hus. Thank you for being here today. We'll be making this very basic headband with this beautiful aqua colored peony flower. It is adjustable for any size. Let me tell you what you're going to need. You will need a ruler or a measuring tape, a crochet hook. I will be using a 5mm size, a yarn needle, stitch markers if you don't have any use paper clips and scissors for the yarn this is the same type of yarn just two different colors but i don't have the paper for both of them so i can't tell you the color but i can tell you it's this joy dk by loops and threads it is a light three weight the recommended hook size is a five millimeter this is 100% acrylic. I'll be starting with the light colored yarn. Hold the yarn between your fingers. Then take your hook, put it over the yarn, and twist it. Like so, hold on to that little part. And yeah, then you will yarn over and pull through that loop and tighten it. So pull in opposite directions and then you pull on one of the sides to tighten it around your hook. Now you need to make enough chains to get the length that you need. Here I will add the headband sizing guide so that you can get an idea of the size that you will need for the child that you're making this. As a reference, my daughter has a head circumference of n about 19 inches, so I will need a length of maybe 17 or 17 and a half inches okay to chain you will yarn over and pull up a loop so that's one chain again yarn over and pull up a loop so that's two so count along and then measure as you go so that you know when you've reached the length that you need and also you have to make you have to be careful depending on the yarn that you're using if it's very stretchy you don't want to make it that long okay so this one is uh, semi stretchy so without stretching the band you measure it and i have about 17 inches a little bit over 17 and i have 67 chains now I am going to add two more. These do not count. These count as one half double crochet. And we are going to insert our hook into this stitch right here, into this chain right here. So we're going to skip one, two, and then in the third one, because those are the two that we're not counting, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook through that chain, yarn over pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops so this is my first half double crochet again into the next one right here you're going to yarn over insert your hook through there yarn over pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops that's your second half double crochet. So it's a very basic headband with all half double crochet stitches. And we're just going to go back and forth. So first finish this row and I will show you how to, how to then turn around again. Oh, and by the way, the reason why I put my stitch marker here is it's just, I've gotten used to it. I like to see where I started my first stitch, where I have that first half double crochet. This is the end of row number one, and yes, I have 67 half double crochets, so you should have the same number as the one that you started with. So the chain that you made minus those two that you added, okay? So do not count those two, remember? Now here at the end, you're going to chain two again. Now you're going to turn your work, and you're going to go not in here, this is this chain of two, but you're going to go into the one right next to it, through there, through both of those loops. So yarn over, insert your hook, and do your half double crochet. 
and now continue until the end of the row until you have that same amount of half double crochets as in that first row so you should have 67 uh, well i should have 67 and <laughs> Oh, and I also forgot to mention, in case you were wondering, here this chain of two counts as one of your stitches. Okay, so when you're counting now in row number two, you count this as your first half double crochet. And then you go two, so one, two, three, four, yeah, and so on. I will continue doing rows of half double crochets until I reach the width that I'm looking for. That's probably gonna be um, maybe two and a half inches, maybe even three, I'm not sure yet. So if you wanna do it very thin or very wide, it is up to you. I have done a total of seven rows of half double crochets. After your last stitch, you will chain one. And now you want to join the two ends and we will do slip stitches. So go into this first stitch right here and then on the other side as well. Just sort of line them up as best as you can. Then yarn over, pull up a loop and that same loop you're going to pull it through the one that is on your hook. That is your first slip stitch. Okay, now go into the next stitch right here yarn over, pull through, and pull it through that loop. Then continue to join the rest of the stitches, or the rows, like I said, just match them up as best as you can. You're not going to really see this part because we're going to put the flower over it. We can now cut off this yarn, that, then I yarn over and I pull it through one more time and tighten that. So here's your bumpy part. Here you can make a knot here with the, uh, with the other one, just to have it extra secure. Obviously this part, you just turn it inside out and there you have your headband. We need to thread these loose ends in and let me just show you how to thread them in. So anytime that you have to thread in something, you can just go ahead and do it like this. I'm just simply going back and forth into different stitches, pulling that through. And sometimes they're too short, so it's a little bit harder to do. Okay, like that, and then you cut off the rest. Now let's move on to the peony flower. Okay, grab the other colored yarn. Now this, this peony flower consists of two flowers, basically. So uh, I wanted to show you another way to do a slip knot is by making a loop with your yarn, insert your hook through the middle and grab that loose end and carefully pull it through that loop, hold on to both ends and then pull with the hook in the opposite direction. Then simply adjust your yarn and there's your slip knot. Now chain six. And we're going to join the two sides, just make sure it's not twisted or anything like that, by going into that first chain. And you will join with a slip stitch. So you just pull it through that first and that second loop. And there's your little ring. Chain three. Now this is round one. This chain of three counts as one double crochet, by the way. Now you're going to do 17 double crochets into the ring. That means you yarn over, you insert your hook into the ring, then you yarn over and pull up a loop. That leaves you with three loops on your hook. Now you yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. And that is your first double crochet. So yarn over into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over pull through two to close this off we are going to slip stitch into the top of the third chain that we make is where you need to insert your hook and do the slip stitch that's the end of round one for round number two we are going to chain eight but after our third chain so on our third chain we're going to put a stitch marker do one two and three that's our third one four five six seven and eight so this counts as one double crochet plus a chain of five now we're going to double crochet into our next stitch which is this one right here just get kind of twisted so you feel like you only have two loops but you just have to turn it around and finish off that double crochet now we're going to chain five double crochet into that next stitch Again, chain five and double crochet into that next stitch. Repeat that until you get to that last double crochet in your round. Let me just give you a tip. So when you're doing the double crochet into that next stitch, if you don't hold on to, it, to the yarn right here, you see how it twists into itself? So when you go in and you yarn over, you kind of lose track of where you need to pass the yarn. I mean, it's still doable, right? But it's just a little harder. Now, if from the beginning, when you're going to do the next double crochet, if you hold on to the yarn right here on your hook and you yarn over, don't let go of it, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. See, it's much easier to see where those first two loops are. Okay, when you are done with that and you have your last chain of five, you went all around, this is where that stitch marker comes in handy because now you'll know exactly where you need to do that slip stitch to join these two sides. You can take it out and do your slip stitch. There you have it. That's the end of round two. Okay, now we are going to make a slip stitch into the next three chains so the ones that are right here so there's that slip stitch where you joined now go into the next chain and do a slip stitch that's one go into the next one that's two and the next one that's three now chain one into that same stitch where you just did that last slip stitch you're going to single crochet one so just insert your hook in there single crochet now chain one and then do another single crochet into that same stitch okay now we have two chains left and we're going to do a single crochet into each one of those. Now here's that post. We're going to do two more single crochets into these next two chains. So go in there, do a single crochet, then in that next one and do a single crochet. Here's our middle chain and every time you get to that middle chain you're going to single crochet into it then you're going to chain one and single crochet into it again now sometimes it's helpful to add your stitch marker right there where you had that chain because when we come back around we are going to work into that little space now we will continue over here so we have that our stitch marker and now we have two chains left and that is where we will do two single crochets then you have the post and you do two single crochets 
and then you repeat the into that middle chain right up here you repeat one single crochet chain one and one single crochet at your stitch marker so that's how you're going to repeat the rest of this where you do two single crochets then you have the post two single crochets and then into that middle one one single crochet chain one one single crochets and then repeat okay i've gone all the way around here is my flower my peony with all my stitch markers we're going to do one more round and then we'll be done with this large flower and it's pretty much the same so after you're done with those last two stitches those last two single crochets you're going to slip stitch into that first chain marker stitch and that's why it was so useful to have these now you can take out the stitch marker and this is where we repeat we chain one and now we go into that same stitch and do a single crochet chain one and single crochet into the same one you don't need to add any stitch markers here because like I said this will be the last round of this large one okay now into the next six stitches you will single crochet There are my six single crochets and there's my stitch marker so again I go in there take out my stitch marker and I single crochet chain one and single crochet again and that's going to be the pattern for the rest of the flower you single crochet six and then when you come to the stitch marker, you do the one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. I am simply going to slip stitch into this one. And then I will cut off my yarn. Then yarn over and pull it through, tighten that. Now we put this one to the side. So this was the large one that's gonna go at the bottom. And then like this. And then we're gonna do the smaller one. Let's start once again with a slip knot. And actually, on this smaller one, leave a longer thread because we will use this to attach it to the headband. That should be good. Now I'm going to make my loop and do my slip knot. And if you don't leave this longer yarn, here at the front that's okay you know you can always use a new yarn to attach your flower okay now we're going to chain six again and we're going to join it with a slip stitch remember just make sure it's not twisted instead of doing what we did with the large flower which was, which was double crochets we're going to do single crochets and we're going to do 17 of those so first you need to chain one and now into the ring start with single crochets i'm going to add my stitch marker right here in that first chain just so i remember where i started and then continue Okay, to join these, you will do a slip stitch into that chain that we first did. So insert your hook in there. Ah, uh, keeps going through more than, okay, I'm gonna have to take out the stitch marker. There we go. Now I am going to chain five. like that and you can add your stitch marker at the second chain so remember how we did it in that large flower this time it's going to be in the second one and then into your next stitch which is right here so right there we are going to half double crochet so the way you half double crochet is you yarn over 
insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Now chain three. Again, into the next stitch, a half double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Chain three again. And repeat that same pattern until you go all the way around your ring. Now I went all the way around and yes, we are going to slip stitch into that chain where we put the stitch marker. Okay, like that. We're going to slip stitch into the next two chains as well. So do one and two. And then into this stitch is where you want to repeat so you chain one and then do a single crochet chain one do a single crochet and you don't have to put any stitch markers here because we will only do this next round okay then continue go into your next stitch and do a single crochet then on the other side, past the post, you do one single crochet. And then into the next stitch, you do one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. And then into the next stitch, one single crochet. And then you repeat past the post, one single crochet, and then one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet into that same stitch. So keep repeating that until you go all the way around. Now to finish off the small flower, you also slip stitch into that first space where you had that chain. So like that. And now you can cut up your yarn. And yarn over and pull it through and pull on that. Now before you attach your flowers to the headband, I would suggest that you thread in your loose ends, just like I showed you with the headband. Now once you have that done, decide where you want to put your flower. So I want to cover the part where we joined the headband. I'm going to put the large one there and then I will put the smaller one on top so that these two match up. Actually, I'm going to just go through that large one as well. That So this middle circle is going to be my guide as I join it to the headband. Now I'm going to go through the headband. Now I'm going to come back through here. Now some people could say this is a carnation flower. Um, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> I mean, but there's lots of peony flowers as well um, different types so I mean it doesn't matter to me whatever you would like to call it um, they're just pretty flowers all of them basically what I'm doing is I'm going through here and back up through here through here and then back up so between the stitches just go all the way around and I will meet you when you're done with it Okay, I went around two times and look, see, I was even a little bit off. That's okay. When you come to the end, you want to do a little knot. So go through and with the same yarn, just make a knot. Okay, now I'm going to cut this off and I am going to thread in some of that yarn. So I'm just going to make it a little shorter. You've done it. Isn't it lovely? I hope you love it. I love it. I think it's very pretty. I love all the crochet flowers, period. I have so much fun making them. And I would love to see what you've done, what colors you picked, what yarn you picked. Follow me at HumbleHuzz. Tag me so I can see your work. I'm sure it's stunning. 
Also, please subscribe to my channel. I would so appreciate it. That way you can also get notified whenever I bring out a new tutorial. I will see you soon, hopefully. Until next time, this is my channel, Humble Has. Bye!